Hey y'all, in for h and h back with the Yaesu FTM 500D. You may recall that I unboxed this previously. And now I have it up on the desk. As a matter of fact, you can see there is the control head for the FTM 400 uh, XDR. Now, uh, all I've done is hook to co the coax and the power. Uh, the microphone connector goes here. And just going to power it up. I haven't read the manual or anything, so uh, try a little intuition here. And uh, let me get it better situated there. I'm going to uh, tr trust that it's probably a long press of the on key here. So here we go, the on button. And it's backlit. Please enter your call sign. So the first thing it wants me to do is enter my call sign, maximum 10 letters, press the function knob. Uh, let's see, that's main and sub. Oh, function knob right here, top right. Guys, this is what it's like. You open a brand new radio and you haven't read the manual. It's, I'm just, I want to see how intuitive it is. So, okay, I need an N. Then press the one, two, three key. I want a four. Press the A, B, C key, and I want an H. Whoops. Okay, fortunately, there's a back key. H, and then an N, and then an H. Okay, I'm assuming I press the function key. Nope, that put another H in. Maybe long press? Nope. That turned it. Oh, well, there it is. It took. So I long pressed. I long pressed the function key, and maybe that's not right. I haven't read the manual yet. Uh, so that might not be right, but it worked. It restarted, and you saw my call sign come up. Ah, uh, okay. Trying to find squelch. There is no outer ring, so I tapped the volume. Now, see, and it, it's back to volume. It gives you squelch temporarily, so I'm going to tap it. See, it turns to SQL on the screen there. I'll zoom in. There we go. All right, I'm going to tap this volume knob, and it says SQL. I just went up a click, and you see it automatically reverts to volume, so that's cool. And, yep, this changes frequency. Now, I'll bet you, and again, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, but, you know, I've used a lot of Yaesu radios, and uh, I'm just going to square with you that people that think the Yaesu menus are difficult, I can't relate to that because it's usually something like this. Long press this, tap this, you know, a lot of it is similar. All right, so I'm going to tap the 144. And no, that did not allow me to go up in frequency. I'm sure the manual will tell me what the shortcut is for that. Uh, on the FTM 400, you tap that and you can uh, you can then move up in megahertz increments. Let me see if there's any. Nope. I just all I did there was. I hit and I hit the back key. I, I pressed in on the function knob. Obviously, I'm going to need to read the manual to learn more about this, but uh, you know, there should be a shortcut to do that. Aha! Pressing the big knob. Oop, I didn't I didn't change it in time. Press the big knob rather than touching the screen. Here we go. 146. All right. And yep. And now I'm going to go to 835. And I will put in my buddy Pete's repeater, which is 146.835. Oh, there it is coming in full scale. So, okay, guys, you sort of mean fly by the seat of my pants here. This is just going to be a basic video. Powered it up, set a frequency in it. So uh, now Pete's machine is actually a plus offset. So, uh, and I notice I'm in VFO mode. It came up in VFO mode. We're not in memory mode. I wonder if I can, nope. 
tapping the minus does not give me the ability to to change the offset so probably let me try this this is the way it works on the uh ftm 400 over there long pressing the disp it's right up here on this radio on that radio it's uh it's it's on the front face so i'm going to long press well this is great for mobile by the way from where i mount as i mine i'll be able to look down and see this at night so i'm going to long press dsp disp display well, oh, brought up a scope yeah, if you just tap it, it brings up a scope. Uh, let's see. But on that rig, you long press and you get the menu. Okay, that didn't do it. How far can I go without pulling out the manual, you know? And by the way, there the little bar over FM, I've learned from the uh, with the 400, that's going to uh, shows you that the radio will automatically be able to determine what mode to use according to uh, the repeater, you know, that it's hearing. Uh, let's see, where can I, that's memory right, v VFO or memory mode, memory right. Uh, let me try this one here. Nope, don't want a memory right. Let's see. Band memory VFO. The long the long press gives you the uh, the secondary option there. I'm sure of what that is. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure out in the manual how to get in there and change this because well, like I said, I'm flying by the seat of my pants with this. I'm gonna go back in here. I have automatic repeater shift off so I can set it plus or minus it doesn't you know if you're new to this 146 most repeaters are going to be minus offset 147 they're going to be plus offset 145 is usually a minus offset but there are some exceptions we've got a couple of repeaters including Mr. Pete's they're about 100 miles apart so the other one is using a minus offset for 146835, and Mr. Pete is therefore using a plus. So, all right, automatic repeater shift off. I'm gonna go down to repeater normal. Okay, zoomed in there, I'm in this menu. Let me press back. So here we are, I want a plus offset. I tap, function knob, here I am. It's kind of a quick menu here. A lot of, I guess, some of the things you would mostly go to maybe, squelch. Automatic repeater shift, and I, t and I turned that to off. It was uh, enabled to auto. And now, repeater normal reverse, you know, if you want to hear the input. Now, I'm going to long press the function knob, brings up a menu, uh, and that's where you can do direct frequency input. And, and it's, you know, you can use the touch screen there. I'll hit the back key. The back key is over here to the right of the VFO. I know I'm zoomed way in. All right, let me go down. Uh, mic gain. AMSTX mode. That's what allows it to choose the mode. Let's see. Timeout timer. Let me keep going. Audio equalizer. It's got an audio equalizer. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Oh, we go back. Stay on task, Doug. All right, looking for... Oh, look at this. Repeater, automatic repeater shift. You can en enable or disable that here. I guess this is the deeper menu. Like I said, flying by the seat of our pants. Repeater shift. It's on minus. I'm going to press in. Okay, again, I'm zoomed way in, but let me show you what I'm pressing. I'm pressing the function knob, okay? Like I said, short presses, long presses, it seems like every button on here can press in. So I'm going to press it, and highlights it, go to plus, perfect. And then press it again to lock that in. Now I know I saw where I could set the tone at the next menu up, so I'm just going to back and tap the function knob. And I need and set the squelch here for tone encode. There we go. And now, 
for Mr. Pete's repeater, the tone is 100. Okay, if I wanted to change it, you see there are your options. I'm just gonna leave it on 100. And I think that's good. I'm gonna back out of that. And let's see if I can bring up Mr. Pete's 146.835. This is a hoss of a repeater, y'all. N4 H and H testing. Turn the volume up. Pete might even come back to me. He monitors a lot. He's got three repeaters at least in North Georgia, and they are powerhouses. Speaker sounds pretty good. N4 H and H clear. Two. Oh, there was Pete. Oh, hey Pete, I think I doubled with you. N4 H and H, how you doing? Oh, doing well. How about you? Turn it down a little bit. Oh, the, the mic is backlit, y'all. Uh, doing well, Mr. Pete. I actually just unboxed a radio, and I'm filming a video. I haven't read the manual on it. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, setting it up, and uh, your repeater is the first one I'm programming into it. It's a Yaesu FTM 500D. Well, that's a nice radio, isn't it? It's handsome. I'm liking the way it looks. Just muddling my way through the programming, but, you know, I think once you program one Yesu, you kind of figure your way through the other ones. You know, a lot of, a lot of long presses and short taps, and every button is also a switch. You know, you press in on them, and so it kind of muddled my way into the menu. Found where I could change the offset because, you know, it's got the automatic repeater shift, and it wanted to go to minus, and I didn't want to work the Bowling Brook machine. If even if a Bowling Bowling broke, I think it is south of us here, even if I could hit it. Tone, but other than that, I bet you could. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's true. It does have a different tone as well. I hear it every now and then when there's some uh, uh, ducting going on or a little temp temperature inversion. Um, how's the audio on this one? It, it I've noted I ran across in the menu the mic gain setting, but I I don't know. I usually leave it alone. All right, well, great, great there, uh, Pete. And, uh, you know, this repeater, you, you guys, I'm filming, so uh, I'll say this for the camera. This repeater is uh, way up near Jasper, Georgia, and I'm down in, on the northeast corner of Atlanta, so it's probably 40 miles by air or maybe more, right, Pete? What is, and I'm going to have to say is about... 20, 23 miles farther. Wow, and then of course the one on Black Mountain, um, I've, I think it's a little over 40 miles for me. That's a horse of a machine too. But uh, you know, the receive audio coming out of the speaker is pretty good for a little radio. Sounding good, very good. All right, Pete, well thanks so much for coming back to me, appreciate it. And uh, this, this one's gonna go into memory one. Uh, take care, uh, 73 to you, and uh, say hi to Miss D. This is N4 H and H. N4 KHQ 73. Okay, there you have it. Now the fan came on. Can y'all hear it? Okay, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but that's about right. You know, um, it comes on only when necessary. My ICOM rig in my truck now, the fan comes on. The, the fan comes on the moment you transmit. And it'll just stay running for minutes and, you know, even after you're finished. It, it's like it doesn't have a temperature sensor that just says, hey, we need cooling. And then, no, we don't need cooling. I like the way every Yaesu rig I've had only turns on the fan when necessary, turns it off when it's no longer needed. Now my, let me zoom out here. Okay, there we go. The 2980, this is 80 watts of output, two meters only, has a big giant heat sink, doesn't need a fan. And it makes a great base station for two meter only work. All right, so there you have it. Some initial programming, flying by the seat of my pants. 
would have gone much smoother if I'd have read the manual, but uh, I live dangerously. I hope y'all found the video helpful and informative. Um, so far, this looks like it's going to be a great rig. Uh, definitely, uh, it looks like it might be a perfect fit for my truck. Handsome to look at. So far, fairly intuitive. And if you like watching videos on my channel, please do me a favor, hang around for a half a minute more or so. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers. I call them long haulers. These are people who support the channel with um, yearly donations. They get a lot of perks from that too. I try to, try to treat them like royalty that they are. And I call them S9 VIPs. Uh, we have, there are three levels of their membership, S5, S7, and S9. Uh, the S5s are called associate, and the S7s are executive, and the S9 are VIP. And these are VIPs who support the channel on a yearly basis, and, and some have supported the channel now for over three and a half years. And without them, you wouldn't have seen this video or literally hundreds of others. I'm up to around 700 videos and around 60 playlists on the YouTube channel. So the bulk of that most of that would not exist without these long haulers. So please uh, let me acknowledge five of them who helped bring this video to you and the others. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.